That should help the pitchers tonight. And we'll see if J.J. can have a good night for the Braves and get a little run support. That would be real nice. As Atlanta's Dexter Fowler starts with the ball low. One ball and no strikes. Fowler one for four with a run scored. Also drove in. A run for the Rockies last night. Game was very close until Atlanta's defense had some ninth inning troubles. Eric O'Flaherty and Peter Moylan gave up hits to the first batters they faced in relief of Derek Lowe, who was terrific. And Colorado tacked on three to put it away. 5 1 was last night's final score. Mile high pop. The wind might push that into the seats. Garrett Anderson over near those seats. Leans in. Did he have room? Hey. Yes, he did. A little snow cone. How apropos is that? Good play. One out. Got to the wall in time and had a chance to then set himself and reach in. Just enough room right in the end of his glove. That's one of those old fashioned web gloves, too, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of an old Stan Musial type. That basket web. And it served Anderson well there. Just enough room to take care of Fowler. Now Troy Tulowitzki, the batter. He's hitting 250 with five homers and 12 runs batted in. He's hit safely in eight of the last nine Colorado games. Braves need a good first inning and offensively get off to a good start. Get on top of these Rockies early. Set the tone and let everybody relax a little bit offensively so you can be a little more aggressive. And I would assume that their offensive woes are weighing on the offensive group of the ball club. You know, though, on the road trip, Chip, they, they had some games where they scored early, lost the lead, and came right back. It was like they were playing with so much confidence then, moving runners over, getting them in, that a couple of runs of deficit didn't mean anything to them. Wendell knocked that down for Jeff Francoeur. Actually has to come in a couple of steps. Now tonight you want to hit the ball high in the air. Ball might go out on the line. But you get it up above the stands, and the outfielders should have an easy time of it, although that is the sun field so far early tonight. And here's Todd Helton, still stuck on 1,999 hits. That laser he hit last night in the ninth inning was ruled an error. As Jurgens misses outside, Jack Wilkinson, the official scorer. There were a lot of people upset with this, but it depended on which side of the fence you were on. Helton wanted it changed to a hit. Escobar said it should have been a hit. He said it was hit so hard, it was either going to be a hit or a miraculous play. But you talked to most everybody up here that watched the game last night that felt like you now had a chance to maybe move over in front of that instead of going to one knee. If I'm Helton, I want a clean hit for my 2,000th hit. Yeah. I, I want to stand at first or second base or wherever and say, hey, can I have that baseball rather than have it changed after the fact? Well, a hitter has the right to request the official score, review the play, and Jack Wilkinson did that. In fact, Jack did go downstairs and talk to Helton and talked to Clint Hurdle, the Colorado manager. And Jack said that both Helton and Hurdle couldn't have been more gentlemanly, more professional in the way that they stated their case. As Todd draws a two out walk. But ultimately Jack felt that the point you made that Escobar played it off to the side. Yes hard hit ball. But a major league player has got to make that play. He didn't. And uh, Jack Wilkinson after that review stuck by his guns. And made his decision and is standing by it. And as a hitter all you can do is ask for a reviewer. Right. Or ask for somebody to reconsider and Jack did that so end of story here's hop 345 his average and that one got a piece of Brian McCann on the way by no balls and a strike yeah I mean I don't think that's going to be the last hit Todd Helton ever gets I wouldn't think so no so he'll have an asterisk ball and he'll have hit number 2000 mm -hmm. in the trophy case at go. some point right
fisted toward third. Foul ground. Chipper dies and just can't put the squeeze on it. Almost. Boy, did that get in on Hop's hands, and that's hard to do. Chipper laid out for it, had it in his glove, but when he hit the ground, came out. Can anything hit to the left side of the infield? Is going to be blown toward the stands, and now Brian McCann out to the mound just to give Chipper Jones a few moments to collect himself as the count now 0 and 2 to Hop. I want to go back to Helton. Yeah, he didn't get his 2,000th hit last night, but I'm going to venture a guess that somewhere along the way in his career, he's had 10 or 15 that did go his way. Oh, yeah. And probably 10 or 15 that didn't, or he might be well past 2,000 by now, so I wouldn't worry too much about last night. He looks real stressed out about it as yes. he stands at first base. Uh -huh. Jurgens has an effective first. Hop his first strikeout victim. Brad hitless so far in the series, and one half of your request has been obliged. Let's see if the Braves' bats can. Check out this new lineup for Bobby Cox tonight. One that hopefully is productive and scores a ton of runs tonight. Yunel Escobar, Casey Kochman at bat first before Chipper Jones tonight. Brian McCann bats clean up. Garrett Anderson's hit in five straight, followed by Kelly Johnson in the sixth spot tonight. And then Frank Coor, Schaefer, and Jurgens. On the mound is 26 year old Josh Hamill. His first start against the Atlanta Braves came over from Tampa Bay in early April. After a couple of injuries beset the Rockies and gave them a little pitching depth. This is his fifth start. Great big guy, 6'6, 220 out of South Kitsap, Washington, and a career record of 7 and 17. It's been all of last year and part of the year before with the Tampa Bay Rays. And he hasn't given up a run on the road this year in 10 innings. I think I said Josh. It's Jason Hamill. I beg his pardon. One pitch and one man out. This Rocky defensive club once set a major league record two years ago. And they're still pretty good. They're not playing as well as they can, but still a, a good group. Smith, Fowler, and Hoff in the outfield. Stewart, Tulowitzki, Barmas, and Helton on the infield. Stewart playing third base because of Garrett Atkins' continued problems at the plate. Chris Ionetta, a very good receiver, doing the catching. So, you know, Escobar, the Braves leadoff man, sees one pitch, grounds out to second. Now the Braves new number two hitter for this night, Casey Kochman, digs in and is ahead in the count. One ball, no strikes. This is an interesting Braves lineup in that it's not one that's blessed with a lot of power, and it's not one that's blessed with a lot of speed, and it plays in a very big ballpark. Happy. 
And so partly because McCann and Anderson were out so long, this is an offensive group that's still trying to mesh itself together yeah. here in the middle of May. That's a good description. But I think it's fair to ask, how is this offense going to mesh and play well in this park without those components we mentioned? Because it's tough to win when you don't really have a character to your offense. Some teams try to manufacture runs and play the speed game. Other teams can still try to bludgeon you with home runs. Braves don't do either one of those things. There's a gap shot in the left field. Perhaps as Smith tries to cut it off, does on the track. Kochman on his way to second. He doubles with one out. I think what you just saw is more reflective of what kind of offense this is. It's a line drive gap hitting team. They're going to hit a few homers, but they're not going to hit a bunch. So while in the past this ballpark, despite its size, still gave up home runs to the Braves when there were the likes of Gary Sheffield and Andrew Jones in the lineup, Fred McGriff for that matter, it's not that type of lineup anymore. So you're right. Uh, speed, defense, and occasional power is more what you're going to need out of this lineup. We'll see if Chipper can provide a little of the latter here with Kochman aboard. Chipper one for three in the series. Two hits away from 1,000 in this ballpark for his major league career. And Hamill ahead of him quickly. He throws hard. This guy's 90 to 94 in his fastball and his breaking pitch is a real hard slurve type pitch. He's working on a changeup that's still, in the opinion of some, thrown too hard, but he can rush it up there on you. And with that uh, group of pitchers that the Tampa Bay Rays have put together with Garza and Sonnenstein and Kazmir, not much room in rotation for them. They've got the kid David Price waiting in the wings at AAA, so they're giving Hamill a chance to pitch in the other league, pitch every fifth day perhaps, and maybe have a nice career as a Rocky instead of a Ray. What a break for him. Yeah. Tenth round draft pick in 2002. He definitely throws downhill. Long legs. And very upright in his delivery. And that gives him great leverage on his fastball. And as a hitter, the challenge presented is what with a guy 6'6", like Hamill? Well, if he's hitting spots, the advantage for him is that with that over the top angle. The ball gets in on you fast if he's pitching you inside. It's a little tougher to get on the right plane as the pitch with your swing. And that's that's a great advantage for him. It's a little similar to what Scherzer did to the Braves uh, a couple of games ago with Arizona. Big tall guy and he was just pounding the strike zone with his fastball that was 93 94. Two balls, two strikes to Chipper Jones. Wind blowing straight in. And there's that off-speed pitch. Chipper swings through it. So the first strikeout for Hamill is recorded. Runner at second with two outs. That was a very good pitch. And because he had thrown him some fastballs, it had Chipper out in front a little bit. And that is a good, hard slurve. Little, little combination of curveball angle, but slider speed and chipper fooled something that hasn't been happening to him very much lately eight for his last 17 before that strikeout that'll go in chipper's book for later in the game perhaps as Brian McCann bats with two outs and a man aboard well it's funny you say that about chipper because I asked him before the game I said what do you know about Hamill and uh, he said well I'm going to go in after batting practice and watch some video and I said but you've never faced him before he said yeah you know I have and I said, when? He goes, spring training a couple of years ago. I said, are you serious? And he goes, yeah, I remember him throwing hard into both sides of the plate. Line drive, right center field. Fowler can't get there. McCann with two outs scores. Kochman, he's on his way to second, and he is out. But the run scores before the tag was applied. And the Braves have indeed scored first against Jason Hamill. Kochman doubles, McCann singles, 1-0 Atlanta as we head to the top of the second inning at Turner Field.
One to nothing Braves as we go to the second inning. That young man hoping not to be on the Piedmont injury report. Piedmont Hospital injury report, of course, brought to you by Piedmont Hospital. Get the perfect balance of health and care at Piedmont Hospital, the preferred health care provider of the Atlanta Braves. Visit PiedmontHospital.org. Jorge Campillo in his second rehab start tonight at Triple A Gwinnett. So we wish him well. Hope he comes out of that healthy and ready to go. We've talked a lot about Glavin and Hudson in recent days. Tim Hudson feeling great, kind of having to sit on him right now. He's feeling so good, but a projected August return for him. Chris Ionetta leads things off against Jair Jurgen. Stake to a 1 0 lead. Ionetta 2 for 4 last night. And he too drove in a run. Boy, there's a lot of fun stuff to do in Scouts Alley at the ballpark. Did you go throw some tonight? I threw once. How did it feel? Uh, before it felt I can great. see your arm kind of hanging limp. Afterward, it didn't feel so good. <laughs> I think they've got the slow gun out there, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've heard They're that. At least 30 miles an hour slower yeah, than it I've should I've heard be. that from some 12 year olds. Yeah. <laughs> I did better than Lemmer. Did you? Yeah. In fact, Lemmer had a real tough night tonight. He went to the junior batting cage, you know, the one with the, the pitching machine. Mm hmm. The junior cage struck him out on three pitches. Oh no. Yeah. He was very upset. But as high net, it's a ground ball to second. Mark said he was going to come talk to you about how to stay inside the ball, let your hands do the work, take the ball the other way when you're not swinging well. <laughs> and he promised tomorrow to have a much better time of it in the batting cage at Scouts Alley. Was he having one a problem from one side of the plate? Well, or the I only other? saw him bat left handed. Mm -hmm. A lot of pop ups, you know, threw the bat once. It was just, it was oh a, no, it, it was an embarrassing sight. Oh, wow. I've never seen Mark lose his temper either. That was a very shocking thing. He kind of reverted back to dirt. Yeah, yes. Here's Seth Smith, 294, his average. You know, it's never a good thing when you go and you do the pitch speed thing. And as soon as you throw the ball, you feel like having Rice Krispies. <laughs> right? You can hear the snap, snap crackle, crackle pop. Yeah, that's not good. One and one can count. Well, I just think if JJ had gotten any kind of run support earlier this year, last 11 games, the Braves have scored a total of 30 runs. Games in which he's pitched. That's not just the time he's in the game, but the game final score. I've got that. His last six starts, while he's been in the game, his last six starts, he's only had nine runs to work with, and he's still got a winning record, and has an ERA just over two, as you mentioned, one of the best in the league. Tells you what kind of pitcher this guy is. When you talk about teams making good trades, bad trades, as McCann should handle a Smith pop up behind the plate. Kochman over nearby as well. Two outs. It's very early in Frank Wren's tenure as the Braves general manager, but that deal is already one of the best any GM could make. Edgar Renteria for Jurgens. This is his best pitch, his changeup. And had Smith out in front. Even though the pitch was up a little bit, the timing was thrown off, and all he could do was pop it up. Yeah, Gorky Hernandez hitting 340 yep. at Double A Mississippi. Part of that deal. So that worked out very, very well for the Braves as Ian Stewart in for a slumping Garrett Atkins at third base. Looks at a ball in the dirt. One ball, no strikes. Two more with the Rockies, then the red hot. Scorching hot Toronto Blue Jays come to town Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Good crowds, by the way, expected all weekend long with Toronto here. And we've got a pretty good chance of Friday night getting a look at Roy Halladay for the Jays. That's great for us, not so great for opposing hitters. He's only 8 and 1 to start the year. He matched up with Kinchin Kawakami. Fireworks that night. Yes. Read something today about Halliday. He won the Cy Young Award in 2003. He's three weeks ahead of his pace wow. for wins. He didn't win his eighth game that year until the first week of June. Just think if he played 
in Boston or New York or St. Louis or Chicago or Los Angeles. It would be Clemens like. Yes. The adoration he would receive. Clint Hurdle's got a little bit of a dilemma with his third base spot. You say Stewart's playing for a slumping Garrett Atkins. Stewart's seven for his last 45. 46. Garrett Atkins, five for his last 47. Takes your pick. Well, Stewart's a lot better. That's why he's <laughs> in there tonight. Second strikeout for Jurgens, three up, three down, and a one nothing. Hey, you got the chop house working tonight. You can see that uh, a very nice sunlit chop house this evening. And a reminder, it's time for the know-how question of the game built by the Home Depot. If you have a question, send us an email. And if chosen, we'll answer it later in the game. And here's where to send it. Send it to Braves at PeachtreeTV.com. Please tell us your name, where you're from. More saving, more doing. That's the power of Home Depot. Do you think we have an all-star vote controversy looming at the chop house. I mean tonight there's a vote for Brian McCann sheet last night it was Chipper Jones but it was all the way on the other side oh, of the yeah. chop house. I mean is there a rivalry brewing out there. Looks like a, a split deck out there. Yeah. Garrett Anderson hits it a mile high into left center field. Dexter Fowler is over. I hope not because they don't play the same position. You can vote for both of them. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to see a Gordon Soley Pier 6 brawl. No, no, out no. There. No. And if you could vote for pitchers, which you can, Jair Jurgens would be a guy, and so would Derek Lowe, you bet. Vote for. So Charlie Manuel and Joe Madden will be the. All star game managers, the Midsummer Classic at Bush Stadium in St. Louis this July. And now Kelly Johnson in the sixth spot, the order for Atlanta. Looks for his first hit of the young series. He was over four last night and rolls foul to Todd Helton at first. And he says his swing feels good. And I was complimenting him because he hasn't had results. He's hit the ball hard at least once a night, if not twice a night. And seems like it's always right at somebody. But I told him I, I feel like you're on one of those uphill swings. And he said I do too. And I don't know what else to do to improve the way I'm swinging. Just find a hole. That went down the left field line, fisted and fair. Kelly, big turnaround first. Good play by Smith to hold him to a blue single. So there you go. You, you find a hole and don't really hit the ball as hard. But you certainly take the base hit, and you're right, Chip. That was a good play by Seth Smith to hold him to a single. About shoulder high, too. How hard is it, Joe, as a, a player? Look, this is a results-oriented game. 
How hard is it to stick to that plan even when things aren't going the way you hope? You know that the other baseball people know, especially your manager, when you're swinging good. That you're hitting the ball in the nose and hitting in tough luck, much like when he first came up and couldn't buy a hit and seemed to really get things going in Arlington against the Rangers. Hit a home run there in front of a lot of family and friends. And that opened the floodgates. But he was still in the lineup even then because Bobby realized and knew he was swinging the bat great. He started his career one for 30. A lot of other places Kelly Johnson would have been sent back to the minor leagues and never heard from again. And so with that thought in mind now you have Jeff Frank up. And much has been made of Jeff's new approach and his new plan at the plate. But the average isn't what he would hope it would be. It was earlier. It's not now. Jeff's really struggling against right handed pitching too. chip. He came into the game tonight. With a very high average against lefties hitting 347. But only 196 against right handers and part of that is his. Flying open. More against right handers. And I think against lefties he's more patient and lets the ball travel a little farther. Jeff with just two home runs in his last 244 at bats here. That's surprising. And he's one of the components of what the Braves were hoping to accomplish and still are offensively in this park. Chopper up the middle, but they had him played perfectly. Ball dropped. How about that? Barmas just flat out dropped it. That is a gift. Braves will gladly take it instead of an inning ending double play. Atlanta has two men on and one man out. Boy, that's a huge break for Atlanta. You're right, Chip. That saved two outs. Not going to be scored as two errors. Clint Hurdle making a quick note. And no chance for Jeff to call up to the press box and complain about not getting his 37th hit of the year. No, no. I don't think so. Not no. there, but the Braves will take the opportunity. Here's Schaefer. Jordan 215. And 0 for 3 in the series. And the question I asked you last night was the same question I asked Terry Pendleton. And I got the same answer, I think. The natural progression of a young player making the jump from double A to the big leagues. A lot of strikeouts, a lot of walks, learning the strike zone here. He's starting to see Jordan take the next step. More consistent contact. Still not getting the average high, but putting the ball in play more. Just like that. Helton ground ball. There's one. They've got to hurry and no chance. And the, that's a productive at bat for the Braves. Because now you clear Jurgens. Put it in play and good things could happen. That's always the case. I mean, if you put pressure on the defense, something might happen just as was the case on the ground ball to Barmas. Todd Helton, always an excellent fielding first baseman. Got that started quickly, but with Jordan Schaefer running, no chance to get the 3 6 1 double play tonight. Yeah, the Braves had enough double plays last night. Yeah, for one series. Four of them in the game. And now JJ can help himself with two outs. This has been where the Braves have been very good this year. Two out offensive production. Their first run came with two outs in the opening inning tonight. Jurgens is a smart baseball player and not a bad hitter. He can put the ball in play. We've told you before how fast he is, but he's got a hole on the right side. You got a hard thrower out there. Might just look for something here to shorten your swing up and kind of poke it to right field. He tried to. Yeah, he did. Rockies at the top of that two out run scored list. Right. 
at the knees a strike JJ won't like that as a hitter but he'll love it as a pitcher yeah. if he gets that call bit of a late call by Mark Carlson. Good ball and strike umpire though. This is a good crew. Uh huh. Emergency hack and he stays alive. Hard breaking ball. And the collateral damage of the Barmas drop is all these extra pitches Hamill has to throw. Mm -hmm. Won't bother him here, but might bother him by the time you get to the fifth inning if he's still out there. And that's what you want against the Rockies. Get into that pen. Two balls, two strikes instead. The first for Schaefer is back. You don't figure him to run for where he'd be thrown out. Jurgens would have to lead off the next inning. But just in case the Rockies will put on signs so that everybody knows what Ionetta is going to do with the baseball if Jordan Schaefer runs. Will he throw all the way through to second? Will he pump fake and go to third? Or will he fire it back to the pitcher? He's going. There's a surprise party. How about that? Fouled away. It's a very surprising play. Jurgens fouled it off. Not going this time. And JJ up the middle. Barmas backhands. Long throw. JJ has an infield hit and an RBI. His first career RBI in 72 plate appearances. Told you he could run, and with the way Hamill followed through off the mound, tough play for Barmas. And watch him take off out of the box, smelling a, a hit and a run. Helped himself there, and a chance for more, thanks to the error. By Barmas on the ground ball hit by Frank Coor. The Curacao Comet. Oh, I like that. Makes it a 2 0 game for Escobar with two on and two out. Yanel swung at the first pitch of the ball game and rolled out to second. An unearned run adds to the Atlanta lead. And that's something else you like to see. Add on. Keep pecking away, chipping away, adding away, whatever you want to call it. Jair is from. Willemstead in Curacao. A lot of people down there calling the Willemstead Wacket. That's just a few. Willie. Something else about having Escobar in that leadoff spot is Jordan Schaefer's been walking a lot. So there is that possibility that he's going to be on base some, as he is right now, when Escobar comes up there in the leadoff spot and his number is hitting with runners in scoring position still outstanding. And Schaefer, despite the strikeouts, does walk a lot. I mean, that's part of hitting eighth. And with his speed. Even a hard hit ball, they probably wouldn't be able to score or get him out. Diving stop to Lewitsky. He too drops the ball. They throw behind Schaefer at third. All hands are safe and a decision on this play. That ball was scalded. To Lewitsky made a great play to save a run. The fact that he didn't get an out 
is kind of secondary, but he definitely saved a run. And it should go as a base hit on the diving effort. So I'm not sure he was going to get Escobar, even if he'd come up cleanly. Bob Apodaca out to explain to Hamill that yes, we will catch one cleanly before long. Just hang in there. Yeah, he hopes so. Tulowitzki can really pick it. When did he play college ball? He was at Long Beach State, wasn't it? I think you might be right. It's not in the bio here. Yep, Long Beach State. And I think uh, Evan Longoria played on the same team. No kidding. As Tulowitzki. Here's Kochman, bases loaded, and he fouls it away for a quick strike. Casey had a hard time in these situations in April. Remember, he didn't have many RBIs, and then all of a sudden it clicked. He got hot, and in May, a 357 average with runners in scoring position, and his RBIs are up to 15. Five hits already for Laddie in the game, and all of this mess. After a drop, flat out drop by Barnes in second, that would have been a double play. And a ton of extra pitches for Hamill. You figure he's not going to last much beyond the fifth inning tonight. At this very heavy pace. It's interesting. His last start came against Houston. He got beat five to three, and they gave up three unearned runs behind him that night. And he pitched into the sixth inning, gave up only seven hits, no walks. What do we say? Sometimes not how you pitch, but when. Yeah. And tonight's the night where the Rockies' leather is leaky. Hot shot. That's under the glove of Stewart at third. One run scores. It's three to nothing. Kochman's two for two. That's his 16th RBI. Schaefer scores another Atlanta run. Jurgens to third, Escobar to second, still with two out. Good piece of hitting on a pitch down and away from him. Went with it, hit it sharply past Stewart. You can see how far he was off the line to almost knock that down. Brian Snitker had to throw up a hard stop sign, too, because Jurgens was ready to try and score. So Chipper Jones struck out on a big slurve in the first. Now hopes to feast with two out here. A high fastball, one ball, no strikes. Again, good coaching by Brian at third base. Not only not sending your pitcher to the plate on what might have been a close play, but you got your best hitter coming up with the bases loaded. Give him a chance. 27th pitch of the frame from Hamill, 2 and 0. As the Braves found out last night, you give a big league club extra outs, you're going to pay. Rockies have given the Braves at least two extra outs in this inning. Chipper loves fastballs. He'll get a green light here, and if it's in that little small zone he's looking for it, he'll tee off. Four straight, and it's four nothing. Well, if there's an epidemic in baseball, it is the bases loaded walk. We've seen a ton of those this year. Wow. Too many. 15th RBI for Chipper. First walk for Hamill. Jurgen scores. He'll have a chance to put on a jacket if need be. Chipper's talked recently about not getting pitched to when there's runners in scoring position. He doesn't mind it so much when they're loaded and they don't pitch yes. to him. It's still an RBI. That's right. And McCann has hit five of the last six grand slams hit by the Atlanta Braves. He's only got five. He's just a mere pup still. A pup? Mm hmm. Generous strike over the outside corner. I like Brian. Real loose hands, real relaxed. 
You throw it, I'll hit it. No balls, two strikes. Broken bat pop. Wind might knock that ball down, but Fowler is there, and that retires the side. Braves bat around in the second inning. The Rockies' defense was offensive, but the Braves glad to have it and glad to have a... Four runs on the board, and so far so good for the recipients of the Big Smile Seed Upgrade, sponsored by Dr. Deborah Gray King in the Atlanta Center for Cosmetic Dentistry. The place in Atlanta to get a beautiful smile. Big smiles all around for that family sitting right down on the field. And they're smiling with a 4 0 lead, too. Jurgens has yet to allow a hit. As Clint Marmis goes to work first and looks at a quick strike. This is a wealth of runs for Jair this early and just what we talked about that he could use so he could relax pitch his game and let the rest of the offense relax as well. Graphic about two out runs and all three runs scored with two out, yep. correct? Yep. Maybe that's what they should do at Turner Field then. Just put a two in the out column at the start of every inning and let the boys go to work. Fought that pitch off and stays alive. Isn't it hard to figure how a guy like Garrett Atkins, who's such a solid major league hitter and has had such good numbers over the last three years or so, could be so lost right now? Can't find his way into the lineup. There's a liner into the left field corner. Garrett Anderson will jog and play that ball off the fence. It dies at the base. Barmas with good speed has the first hit and he stands in second with. Nobody out. And with nobody out, it's time to take a look at the SunTrust Solid Performers. Brought to you by SunTrust. Live solid, bank solid. And Jair Jurgens 2.06 is very solid. 
You know, Johnny Cueto of the Reds was kind of like the forgotten guy in their rotation last year because Walquez was having such a good year, but Cueto doing the job now. And doing it tonight against the Phillies. He's pitching against Cole Hamels. That's the first sacrifice for Jason Hamill. No relation to the Phillies left-hander. And he does does his job, gets Barmas to third now with the first out of this third inning. You know, a lot was said last year about Jeff Francoeur's year-long struggles and you wonder if the same thing might be affecting Atkins this year with him searching and trying to figure out what's wrong with his swing. Dexter Fowler hits. Well, Yogi Berra so many years ago said 90% of this game is half mental. Only Yogi knew exactly what he meant, but I think everybody does. Was he right? Yes, he was exactly right. Because, in my opinion, it's 98% and then some. Plus them another 50 percent mental. <laughs> right. And if you're short on that end, it's a little more, right? Yeah. You hear managers, you hear batting coaches, pitching coaches, players. The word they always throw around is trust. And I would imagine when you are slumping and not playing well, it is very difficult to trust your abilities because, again, it's a results driven business. It's hard to block out what you've been doing and what you try to remember that you've been working on. And if you're thinking about that in the batter's box or on the mound, that's only going to compound the problem, right? Gets in the way. Yeah. Gets in the way of you actually being able to use your God-given ability. So does sitting down for two days, three days, four days clear all that away? Or does it just start up again when you're back in the box no, and struggling? I, I always thought a couple of days off helped people, helped them calm down. Took a little bit of the stress away on any given day to regroup. Fowler coaxes a walk. Second walk of the game for J.J. Tulowitzki's up with men at the corners now. And one man down. Big poppy David Ortiz was benched, if you want to call it that, the last series in Seattle. And Boston's got him back in the lineup tonight after three or four days off. Imagine we'll see Atkins at some point in this series. I agree with you. He's too good a player to be struggling as mightily as he is. Well, there were days a couple of years ago when Andrew Jones was fighting it so much. Where Bobby Cox and Terry Pendleton told him they didn't want him take, to take batting practice. He was taking so many swings in the cage under the stadium. And then before the game started, it was almost like he was used up by the time the game started, both mentally and physically and they had to tell him a couple of times no BP no swings and how hard is that to play to tell a superstar player no mas I don't know that it's that hard if they thought that it was something that he had to do to get away from it quit quit spending half your day trying to figure it out by swinging and wearing yourself out instead of just going to the plate see the ball hit it and react. Two strikes to Tulowitzki. And nearly got hit. Not a very good number for Troy in this situation. Fowler was three for three, including getting a runner in last night with a ground out. Fly ball into right. That should be deep enough to score. Barmas. Fowler's going to think about tagging at first. He'll go halfway and scampers back. Sack fly RBI for Tulowitzki. Wow. And the throwback to first nearly picked off Fowler. But it's an RBI for the Rockies shortstop. It's a four to one game now. If Escobar had just wheeled and fired, they would have gotten Dexter Fowler. He took a look. Hesitated and then threw, and they almost got him. Elton the hitter, and down a strike. 
Got to keep an eye on Fowler. He can really fly. He's stolen 10 bases this year. Brian McCann really has done a good job behind the plate. He's caught four of 12 would be base stealers. And a bunch of them this month. <laughs> Fowler also had a five stolen base game earlier this season, too. That was April 27th. And just one out of three attempts since. A delightful kid from Milton High School in Roswell. Had a chance to play college baseball at Miami. Had a shot at uh, basketball at Harvard. Talking to him after the game last night. His second choice was George Tech. But the Rockies swooped in, signed him, and he's their number one ranked prospect according to Baseball America this year. They think he's going to be a player that can do it all. Covers a ton of ground. It's for power, average, very good throwing arm. And the guy that can run is making its way back. And there he goes. Great jump. And there's number 2,000 for Todd Helton on a beautiful hit and run into left center field. No asterisk on that one. They'll toss that baseball into the dugout. Unel Escobar, in fact, will flip it to Helton at first. 2,000 big league hit. And listen to the crowd in Atlanta. We could talk about the 3,000 hit club and how exclusive it is. There's not all that many guys that even get to 2,000 by comparison to how many people have played this game. So that's quite an accomplishment. Well, Jason Kendall got number 2,000 last night for Milwaukee. And tonight it's Todd Helton's turn. And uh, the Rockies have a threat with two outs themselves as Hoff down a strike. I always said Jason Kendall would get there first. Yeah, I do. You know, he was a leadoff catcher for a lot of years. A lot of extra at bats. While with the Pittsburgh Pirates. So the man that's. Breathing easiest right now is the man in the official scorer's chair tonight, Jack Wilkinson. As no debating that base hit from Todd Helton. 255th player with 2,000 points. Brad Hopp is such a strong pull hitter. That I would almost play behind Helton. He doesn't run as much or as well as he used to and give Kochman a little room here with two out. Pitches for Jair this inning. Run his total up. But he's out of trouble in the third inning, stranding a pair of Rockies runners. But the highlight hit number 2,000 for Todd Helton, a beautifully executed hit and run. Braves give up one in the third, lead four.
There's nothing stopping you. And Garrett Anderson started the fun in the three run Atlanta second. He goes to work in the third and looks at a ball high. One ball, no strikes. And a bullet past Barmas. Lead off hit for Anderson, who now has a seven game hitting streak. Garrett Anderson, well past the 2,000 hit mark in his career. Well, he and Chip were kind of close together. Yeah, there are three players in this game tonight who've picked up 2,000 hits with the same team. Helton, Anderson did it with the Angels, and Chipper Jones with the Braves. Derek Jeter is the only other active player who's done that, of course, with the New York Yankees. So that's a pretty cool stat. 2,385 hits for Anderson. There's 4,385 hits standing over there at first base. Wow. <laughs> with the Albert Einstein of baseball analysis, Joe Simpson, Chip Carey back at Turner Field. Four to one. I didn't add in Tim Cheetahs. No, I'm sure Tim's had a few. First base umpire. Tim, that was Joe, just for the record. <laughs> yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Liner foul, one ball, two strikes. A lot of pitches for Hamill in the second, but that wasn't his fault. A fielding error by Clint Barmas opened the floodgates. This is his 51st pitch of the night. And it's fisted over to Lewitsky. Couple of bloops for Kelly Johnson. Garrett Anderson's chugging for third. Throw is late, and it gets through Stewart. So they're at second and third with nobody out. Boy, and an aggressive move by Garrett Anderson going first to third here with a base hit to left. And good news for Kelly Johnson. They're beginning to find some holes. A little bloop to left earlier tonight for a hit, and now this one fought off. And this is the best it looks like we've seen Anderson run so far this year. I'd say his legs are beginning to feel better. That's a single for Johnson. He takes second on the throw, and now Jeff Francoeur up. Looking to add to a 4 1 lead. And Hamill almost threw it away. Jeff's been excellent. 5 for 6 with a runner at third and less than two outs, getting that runner home. Chance to pick up his 20th RBI of the year. Maybe his 21st. Infield playing back up the middle. The only guy that's really in is Helton at first base. Is in a few steps. Looks like he might come home if a grounder's hit to him. Toward third, diving play. Stewart, long throw. Got him at first. What a play. Man, oh man. That was a nice recovery by Stewart after he gloves this smart play by Anderson not to run into an out but from one knee. Good call looked like by Tim Cheetah. Live action I thought Jeff beat it out. But a good stretch by Helton made the difference. Super play saved a run. Here's Schaefer. Fastball has him behind in the count 0 and 1. Schaefer now the key man in this inning. For you've got the pitcher, Jurgens, waiting on deck.
want something out away from you that you can drive. Since you're even in the count right now. <laughs> Drove that ball, but too far out in front. As long as you're ahead in the count or even it and don't have two strikes on you, you can afford to be patient when the pitcher's in trouble trying to get something that you can extend your arms on and drive. A little different story now with two strikes. And Jordan is choked up on the bat a little bit. Just off the plate, two balls, two strikes. This guy's good fastball can tie you up inside. That's two breaking balls in a row. That's a little surprising. He's got the pitcher on deck. That might be part of his thinking here is to load him up and set a potential double play ball up with the pitcher or to go for a strikeout. So you might see a third off speed pitch here. Moving away from him. Cued toward the Colorado dugout foul. Schaefer stays alive, three and two. I think that broke his bat. He's got a cupped in on his bat. It probably chipped it. And he does have that cupped in. If you hit a ball off the end of a bat that's cupped like that, it'll just splinter the end of it. And it'll look like it broke too. And he might have chased ball four, but again, it goes to. Two strikes trying to protect the plate. Make sure you don't call a take a called third strike. See if they go out there again or if they move this target inside. But it was pretty apparent they weren't trying to throw a strike there. No. Fisted in the shallow right base hit. Anderson scores. Johnson around. Pops throw off target. Schaefer into second standing. Went back to the breaking ball again and made a poor pitch with it. Left it out over the plate, and even though it got in on Jordan a little bit, he fights it off. And Brad Hopp comes in as a great throwing arm, but he was a mile off on that one. And that allowed Schaefer to get into second base easily as Hopp overthrew everybody. And Ionetta almost airmailed second base. Now JJ with a huge lead, six to one now. Bats with a runner in scoring position and one man out. This game for Hamill deteriorating much like it did last time out against Houston where he gave up seven hits in five and a third innings. He's up to nine hits tonight as Atlanta scored in every frame so far. One in the first three in the second two so far here in the third. And Hamill wants to know if that ball was fouled off. Apparently yeah. not as Schaefer moves up 90 feet. No argument from Ionetta. The way Jurgen swung at the pitch looked like he might have foul tipped it. Oh no, Ionetta got crossed up badly. He's shifting out for a breaking ball and it wasn't. That went off his glove. So that would almost certainly be a wild pitch. As the Rocky Penn starts to loosen up here in this third inning. 0 oh and 2, one out, infield comes in with the pitcher up. Atlanta tonight has reversed their fortunes five for nine with runners in scoring position. J. 
Joel Peralta, the right-hander, loosening and loosening quickly. High fly ball to center. Fowler surrounds, gathers, charges, catches. Runner tags. Here's the throw to the plate. And a bulldoze by Schaefer. And Ionetta applies the tag. Bang, bang, play. Double play and a great throw from Dexter Fowler. Nails Jordan Schaefer at the plate. And that retires the side. He's got some kind of arm. Every run in crystal clear, high definition. Peachtree TV in HD can be found at Comcast Channel 802, Charter Channel 707, and Direct TV Channel 17. Check your local listings for other cable systems. The Braves play here on Peachtree TV in HD. Yeah, baby. Woo! <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> a moment ago was the Air Train Airways home run inning of the game. No winners, sadly, but you can still register at PeachtreeTV.com slash Braves. More official rules and your chance to win. The inning ended with a great throw from Dexter Fowler to get the Braves' fastest runner, Jordan Schaefer, at the plate. I'm telling you, the scouting report of Mr. Fowler didn't include that he has a rifle out there. That was an outstanding play. So he's the Roswell rifle now in keeping with our nickname game. Yes. Tonight. Mm -hmm. The Milton missile. One of the things about an outfielder that if you throw good even if you not don't have a great arm if you can get your do the fundamentals correctly keep your momentum going toward the base that you're throwing to you can make your arm a lot better and he has both watch how he catches this ball and all of his momentum continues to home plate he didn't stop took a great crow hop and an excellent one hop throw Jordan Schaefer had no chance but to try and knock the ball loose. Sometimes an outfielder will come charging in, field the ball, and then kind of come to a stop as he throws. Pretty good pitch. And a leadoff walk to Ionetta. And Carlson flinched on that one. He kind of flinched like he was about to stand up and call it and didn't. Right there, he moved and then stood up. 6 1, though, Atlanta the lead. Seth Smith, the batter, popped up his first and only time up. When 
the Braves go to Denver. Let's see. July, right before the All Star break. Braves will play the Rockies in a four game series starting the ninth. The throw off the foot of Ionetta and into center field. He's in safely. And in pain. Yes. Catchers take enough punishment behind the plate. They don't need to get hit with thrown baseballs either. Might have gotten him on the knee. Ionetta, a teammate of Brian McCann's, yeah, on the knee. Ouch. Teammate on the U.S. team on the World Baseball thing. Oh, it was a classic. Yeah, the thing you hate. I don't hate it. I hate the time. Okay, the thing, the thing that's got the timing you hate. Yes. Wild pitch puts Ionetta at second. Seems like there are a lot of guys around baseball that are hurting because of the timing. WBC. Think of the guys that have played in that event that have come up a little lame at the start of the year. Braves have Jorge Campillo, and the, the problem that. Some have said with regards to pitchers the first couple of days of spring training or the first week they're throwing 20 pitches. And then they're in the heat of this international competition throwing 60 to 80 pitches. Then they come back and. Just don't have the same zip. Pio has been sidelined. Chin Ming Wong has been hurt. You've got Dice K who's been hurt. The Red Sox. Conditioning is a priority if you're not ready to play in that you run the risk of hurting yourself. Got to start early. Full count pitch to Smith. And the changeup continues to be golden for Jurgens. That's his fourth strikeout. And both times the good changeup got Smith. Here's tonight's Toyota Tacoma trivia question Which pitcher holds the World Series record for most career complete games? I like that. Complete games in the World Series. You've got to think it's somebody that pitched 40, 50 years ago because you don't have complete games many times anymore. So then you'd have to say somebody who pitched in a lot of World Series, like Whitey Ford. Whitey Ford's what who comes to mind for me. Bob Gibson might be in there. Dizzy Dean. Babe Ruth. One ball, no strikes. And there's a mile high fly ball to right. Jeff Francoeur, though, is going to have plenty of room with the wind blowing. Ionetta tags at second, and he will make his way to third without a play. Two outs. This kind of night where you're on that mound, let him hit it as high as the hitters want. It's not going to go, you wouldn't think. Take a pretty good clout. Thirteen miles an hour gusting to twenty at the start of play tonight. Barmes has doubled and scored. Braves can pitch carefully with him. The pitcher spot is due next, but that doesn't mean that Hamill's going to hit. In fact, it's Garrett Atkins waiting on deck. Breaking ball there from Jair. What a luxury for him to have a five run lead. <laughs> and he blows away Barmas. He is some kind of pitcher, folks. He commands a big lead in Atlanta, bottom of the fourth inning.
Indiana Braves and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Atlanta Braves. Six ones our score. I'm going to ask Hal Galima for a, a hint on the Toyota. One hop bouncing ball off Escobar's bat retires him in the fourth inning. American or National League, Hal, for the most complete games by a pitcher in the World Series. National League. Wow. So it's not Whitey Ford then, obviously. It's going to be Whitey Ford. I'm going to go with Bob Gibson now. Um, oh no. Tom Seaver. You can't give questions only in the era in which you played, Hal. That's just not fair. I was going to say him next. Yeah. Oh, Christy could really bring it. Yes, too. he could. Work both sides of the plate. Yeah. In and out, up and down. Had a little cutter. Up and in, down and away. Mm -hmm. That guy. Mm -hmm. It dro dropped down on you. Called him the barber. Oh, wait, no, that was Sal Magley. Yeah. Call him, the, call him the big train. Big six. The oh, no, that was Walter Johnson. <laughs> That's the big pop up from Casey Kochman. There's your second out. He had a nickname. I just can't remember what it was. Big six, the Christian gentleman, or Matty, is what Wikipedia says uh, about him. And six. like that kid, he had electric stuff. 373 <laughs> wins. <laughs> 188 losses, struck out 2,502 men. Played with the Giants and the Cincinnati Reds for one year, and then he managed the Reds from 1916 through 1918. His 373 wins, third all time, 2.13 career ERA. Wow. 13 times he won 20 games or more. Four times he won 30 games or more. But, but think about it. Go back. You said 2,500 and something strikeouts. With yeah. all those wins, that's not a ton of strikeouts. Yeah. So he was a pitch to contact guy. Yeah. Won the pitcher's triple crown in 1905 and 1908. Five-time ERA champion. Two no-hitters. And his name was honored by the Giants. Do you know why his name was honored by the Giants? No. Because when they played, they didn't have numbers. Ah. Well, I got one more for you. All right. On our history lesson tonight. Christy <laughs> Mathewson, <laughs> born in Pennsylvania. Yep. Six one and a half, one ninety five. Mathewson quote: Mathewson was the greatest pitcher who ever lived. He had knowledge, judgment, perfect control, and form. That from Connie Mack, the tall tactician. Connie Mack. <laughs> Cornelius McGilligutty was the longtime player, then manager, then owner of the Athletics. As Chipper Jones rolls to second, if that was Hamill's last inning, it sure was a quick and impressive one. One, two, three, and out. He gets the Braves in the fourth inning. Good things happen, Jason, when your teammates catch the ball. A shocking turn of events in Atlanta. The Braves up six to one.
Braves Baseball and Peachtree TV brought to you by Jamison Inns. Atlanta-based Jamison Inns ranked number one in guest service nationwide for five straight years. Check into Jamison Inns and experience our new pillow top premium beds and the best in Southern hospitality. Jamison Inns, you deserve a new deal. Beautiful night in Atlanta here at Turner Field. And Jason Hamill, after that 1-2-3 frame, is going to stay on here for the Rockies, down 6-1. to one. Well, you said earlier the, the Rocky bullpen was getting busy, and that's accurate in a couple of ways because of the name on their shirt and the way they've worked out of the bullpen. So an extra inning or two out of Hamill will please Clint Hurdle a lot. And his line score won't look good tomorrow, but again, defensively, the Rockies gave him no help tonight. Well, I should say that. Very little help tonight. A couple of these runs are his responsibility, but the Rockies' gloves led him two, maybe three runs tonight. Otherwise, it would be a much closer game. And so Hamill trying to act as his own relief pitcher here is retired to the top of the Colorado order. Going back to Christy Matthewson, we were looking up some interesting things about his career again on line tonight. 373 games were won by Matthewson in his 17 year career. He never pitched a game on a Sunday in the big leagues. Back then, they had blue laws that didn't allow sporting events to be held on the Sabbath. And the only cities in which that could take place were Chicago, St. Louis, and Cincinnati in the 18 National League. That's because they were out the wilderness. That's lined off Jair Jurgen's glove, and Fowler way too fast to throw out. That should be an infield hit. And it is. It is. Jurgen's almost came up with it. He hit kind of a change up at him. Jair thought it was hit harder than it actually was. And no reason for Kelly to even make an attempt. But back to Hal's very, very tricky trivia question with regards to Matthewson and his World Series complete games. In 1905, he was the starting pitcher in game one, went the distance there. Another pop up on the infield, this one by Tulowitzki. That's handled for the second out. Three days later, pitched a four hit shutout in game three. That two days later in game five went the distance. So three complete games without allowing a run in six days in the 1905 <laughs> World Series. Think that'll ever happen again? No, I don't think so. That's pretty good. So Christy Matthews said one of the greats for the then New York Giants. And then, of course, the Reds at the end of his career. You think he iced his arm oh. after the game? Yeah. Yeah. I'll bet. But that's again we talk about the cyclical nature of our sport is baseball going to get back to teaching pitchers how to go deeper into games. I don't think so. No I think. Because there are so many teams now. That pitching is so hard to come by they're going to protect those arms. The best they can. But you wonder are they really doing a disservice. And Jim, Jim Cott. We, we won't know. No, uh, until somebody tries it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And Jim Cott said, you don't train to run a mile by running a mile. You run 10 miles to run a mile. Runner goes. Good jump. Helton fouls it away. Two balls, two strikes to him. Helton's base hit took a uh, stolen base away from Fowler last time, and he got a huge jump. He got a huge jump just now. It was fouled off, but you can see how close Fowler was to the bag in second. And that ball went through. JJ gave up more stolen bases than anybody last year, and Fowler's taking opportunities here, or taking advantage of this opportunity to get to second base on JJ again because of that slow delivery to the plate. There he goes again, and Helton sprays one back our way. One last note on Christy Matthewson. A great poem by Ogden Nash in Sport Magazine on Matthewson. M is for Maddie, who carried a charm in the form of an extra brain in his arm. <laughs> Yeah, 
2 2. And Helton cues it away and stays alive with a 3.41 average. Take a look. Let's see how many steps Fowler gets here. One, two, three, four. About four steps. And he actually took the first step with the right foot. Not a good crossover step. Quickest break you have and that you can make as a baseball player is in this case keeping that right foot planted and crossing over with the left foot. Cover more ground with that first step. There he goes. Good jump. Round ball off the chest of Kochman. But J.J. does his job, and that retires the side. No runs a hit. A man left. Jurgens qualifies for a victory. He's up 6-1 at home. At Turner Field, Braves chopping away after five innings defensively. Atlanta to work with a six to one lead in the middle of the order is coming up. But Ken Anderson and Kelly Johnson. The only Braves starters without a hit tonight are Chipper Jones and Jeff Francoeur. Two guys who stayed in their same spot in the batting order. Might have to switch that up tomorrow. Yeah. Who are we to complain? Six runs and nine hits. That's a veritable explosion for the Braves bats. And got to like Brian's work since coming off the DL. Yeah. So Chip. He's hit a nine of ten. Average over 400 in that stretch. And that one oh. just foul. I think that oh. one was fair. Oh. Brian McCann can't believe it. Let's see. If he was robbed of an extra base hit. Oh my. Looked fair from up here, didn't it? Oh, I yeah, it did. Stayed fair. All the way to the bag. Look at the base. It let, the last time it hit was in fair territory before it got to the base. Yeah, I'm with you, Brian. Tim Cheetah had a Ten times better angle than I had on it. One ball, two strikes. That's got to be one of the toughest calls for a base umpire. Does that ball go over the bag fair? On a bullet line drive like that. Split second call. And again, no argument from the Braves. Two and two to McCann now. That ball in the dirt. McCann swung over the top. Let's see if he has a parting shot for Tim Sheeta. 
He's looking at him. No, better best to just head back to the dugout, Brian. Remember, Tim will be behind the plate tomorrow night. You might need a call. Mm -hmm. Here's Anderson. Anderson's four out of five, by the way, against Hamill in his career, including a third inning hit and a run score. See the scores at the bottom of our screen tonight. Action all up and down the National and American Leagues. Mets are playing later out in Los Angeles. The Mets lead the division, but boy, do they have a miserable night last night. Five errors and horrible mistakes, mental mistakes. Ryan Church failed to touch third base on what would have been a go ahead run score last night. As Hamill strikes out Anderson for the second out of the fifth inning. And to make matters worse, Delgado, hip surgery. They think he may be back in two months. They also lost Alex Cora, who tore a thumb ligament sliding into second base out west. Reyes has been hurt a little bit. They had Fernando Tatis playing shortstop the other night with all those injuries. Ooh. So the Mets a little vulnerable right now. And that's again back to what we talked about in the yeah. Kelly strokes a shot. He's three for three. Get a couple of drop in and then you rope one right back through the middle. Six spot. That in the six spot. More relaxed and a good place for Kelly Johnson. A place he likes to hit. Fastball kind of running away from him. Remember, Hamill had struck out. McCann and Anderson to start this inning. And Kelly jumped all over that fastball. So the point is for the Braves in this division, there is no perfect team. Braves, I think it's fair to say, have some offensive challenges they have to figure out. Phillies have some starting pitching challenges that they haven't solved yet. The Mets, when Santana pitches, are exceptional. He doesn't, as Ayanetta's throw is short. A steal for Kelly Johnson. To get on a little roll at home, take advantage of what's left of this homestand. The Braves might find themselves in first place when they leave town. Big jump for Kelly. And an easy swipe as Ionetta made a horrible throw. Good play by Barmas to keep that from getting into center field. But ball no strikes to Frank Coor. Rob with hit last time, and that one forces Glenn Hubbard to skip the rope at first. Glenn likes to listen to hip hop, and it came in handy there. Does he really? One ball. One strike. I never knew Glenn was a Nelly fan. Ground ball slowly hit toward Tulowitzki. He's got a rocket for an arm. And that will retire the side. Braves get a third hit in as many tries for Kelly Johnson and leave him straight.
Cinderella Man. Wednesday at 8 on Peachtree TV. 6 to 1, we go to the 6th. Chip and Joe with you tonight on Peachtree TV. Joe and Book Shambi will have the next two games of this series against the Rockies. Then we're back at it Friday with the Toronto Blue Jays in town. Anxious to see that team. They, at last report, led the American League in runs. And a lot of kids pitching very well for them. And you know about Roy Halladay, one of the game's greats. And like Christy Mathewson, a guy that knows how to pitch a complete game. So we will see them this coming weekend here in Atlanta as Hop a 1 2 countdown. Jurgens has had Brad's number tonight. He struck him out swinging twice. And he's been their hottest hitter. You see Chris Medlin Thursday night against these Rockies, and Aaron Cook will be his opponent. Can't wait to see Medlin make his major league debut. You're right about Toronto Chip leading the American League in hitting, second in pitching, second in defense. That's a pretty good combination. It's well rounded. I fly ball into left center field. George Schaefer gives way to Garrett Anderson. The one question mark that people have about that Toronto club is how will they fare in the 54 games they have to play against the Red Sox, the Yankees, and the Rays in the East? They've only played, I think, six games within their yeah. division so far. Yeah, their, their first month and a half was heavily loaded with teams outside the East, and that does make a difference. And I believe, yeah, they are playing in Boston tonight. The Red Sox are beating him in the seventh inning, two to one, at Fenway Park. Here's Ionetta. He's walked and grounded out. I think you were here in the heyday of uh, Cito Gaston and the Braves in the World Series and all that. Cito's back in the dugout, and fan interest in Toronto starting to rise now. It used to be just when Halliday pitched, people came out. Folks are jumping on the bandwagon north of the border. Good breaking ball. He's had a good one tonight. He's fired a couple of outstanding change ups. And got the guy that's on deck, Seth Smith, a couple of times with that. But he's mixed in that curveball beautifully tonight. Jurgen's one of the rarer. Commodities in our game now, in my opinion, in that he, at such a tender age, has come to the major league level and knows how to pitch, not just throw. He got some good instruction at an early age. I would, would promise you that. That's down the line, but foul. You know, I liked it, always liked when Greg Maddox talked about it uh, with respect to pitching. It, it wasn't so much worrying about velocity as he would tell young pitchers he would tell kids he would tell little leaguers work on your command be able to hit spots throw it inside throw it outside and change speeds he never talked about curve balls or sliders he talked about location and changing speeds like that like that Ionetta down on strikes that's number six for JJ and two quick outs Jair just looked back after that strikeout and gave a salute to Brian McCann who wanted him to throw that pitch too. Good straight change up there. Seven strikeouts is his season high that came against the Pirates up in Pittsburgh on April 17th. He's one away from that and he's got plenty of fuel left in the tank tonight. And Smith bats and is behind a strike. That's the other difference. Strike one versus ball one with JJ. You bet. And it'd be nice for the Braves to get a couple more runs and make it so he doesn't have to pitch into the eighth or ninth inning tonight. Bullpen's given up some runs the last two games late in the ball game. Get those guys some work, get them back straightened out with a nice cushion to work with. Ground ball, diving play, Kochman. 
Jurgens to the bag. It's all clicking for Atlanta tonight. Picture perfect defensive play at the first base bag by Casey Kochman. He hasn't made an error in 106 big league games, and that's why. Terrific play ends the sixth. That is set up at the beginning of the year. For example, we think this crew goes to Florida next. And that's not made public as to where they're going to be. But they don't. They don't have big jumps where they would go west coast to east coast or east coast to west coast. They might migrate that way. And there might be one of those a year. But they they try to cut down on their travel as much as possible in terms of how long it takes them to get to places just to try to prevent. Any weather related delays that might prevent them from getting to a game. Yeah, remember the umpires don't really have home games ever unless one of the umpires lives in that major league city. They don't have charters No. I'd heard that Dr. No also came up yeah. with a note. Although in this case it's more like Dr. Knucklehead. Al Galima. He said it yes, Bob, they do rotate on the master schedule from third to second to first to home. Ding bat. Two balls, two strikes. Schaefer in between play for Tulowitzki played it on a short hop, and that's good play. Schaefer retired one out. Now, I heard a rumor that the umpires have to get permission from Glenn Diamond before they can go anywhere in the major leagues. It's like the Glenn Diamond clock they have to punch. Yes. Do you miss the old American League umpires, National League umpires? As Jurgens. Squibs one foul. I mean, back then, ALMs only stayed in the AL, and then they met for the All Star Game of the World Series. Yeah, I kind of do. Do you? I really do. I'll tell you something else I miss. I miss the old balloon chest protectors. Obviously, they weren't as safe as the equipment these days, or they would still be using them. But I would be wearing that equipment that Mark Carlson's got on tonight, and I'd have a balloon with probably peepholes through it. We could get we could get the Black Knight's armor from Monty Python's movies. Yes. Whatever it took. Strap that on for you. Pop up right side. And Helton gives chase and has no play. But it really was interesting because in the, your day, 
There was an American League strike zone and a National League strike zone, and oft times or many times that the outcome of the World Series was determined by who had the plate in Game Seven. Yeah, and we should say what was perceived to be well, an was. American League umpire, and I mean strike zone and National League strike zone, but it definitely affected how pitches were called. For example, with that big balloon protector, umpires couldn't get as low, so they had a tendency to call more high strikes. The National League umpires always wore the inside chest protector. They got, they could get lower and closer to the catcher. They were considered a low strike calling umpire league in the National League. And so baseball trying to get the strike zone to be as uniform, uniform and consistent as possible. Merged the crews five, six years ago, something like that. Oh yeah, at least. As Escobar has got the leadoff assignment for Atlanta tonight, has gone one for three. Hasn't seen many pitches, but hitting a cool 304. Tell you what, you got to give Hamill some credit. Fourth inning, fifth inning, and now this sixth inning, he's been very good. He's given up just one hit in the last two innings and two thirds. It worked out well, not having Atkins come up to pinch hit for him. Kind of interesting how a lineup change can affect hitters or make them feel a little different. It's just that all of a sudden you have a different situation come up than you're used to seeing. That might might change your approach some in terms of what your responsibility is and help you get going. And there is a big difference in the case of Escobar between hitting first and second. It sounds like it's a minuscule difference. But it's a world of difference, isn't it? It is. If Kelly Johnson's getting on in front of him, his approach is 100% different than it is leading off a game. Good hook. And Hamels has his fourth. Hamel, I should say, has his fourth strikeout. We have enough trouble with Cole Hamels as it is. Good pitch. He's retired nine of his last ten. Taste over 60 different beverages from around the world. Make plans to visit the world of Coca Cola today. Well, Jair Jurgens cruising right along as we head to the seventh inning. 6 1 Atlanta the lead. The Rockies have just three base hits tonight. And two of those three hits came in the third inning, the only frame in which Colorado has scored in this game. <laughs> Right. 
Let's go back to what we discussed at the beginning of the game tonight, and that is the National League East and the standings, and nobody can seem to get on a roll. I think we would both agree that there's talent in the division. Yes. And there are three or four teams that are capable of playing a lot better than those records would indicate, especially the world champions. But I still hope oh, another good fastball. Boy, he's good tonight. Season high tying seven. I still contend that whoever's got the best pitching should have a leg up. And right now that to me is the Atlanta Braves starting pitching much better here than it is in Philadelphia. Yep. In New York. Yep. And Florida. And I, that's, I say that with all due respect to the Mets whose guys behind Santana have begun to pitch better. But I don't think anybody matches with Lowe, Jurgens, and Vasquez. Got to get Kawakami straightened out. Yeah. You figure Glavin's going to come back by the end of the month, perhaps, maybe the first week of June. And Medlin's a rookie. He's going to get a start. As Barmas bats and hits one to third. Oh, nice pickup by Chipper Jones. He's picking and grinning. Two out. And Atkins now will bat for Jason Hamill, who gave the Rockies three more courageous innings down six to one tonight. Hot corner action, quick hands, kept the glove down, made it look easy. Well, if pitching is the most precious commodity in our game, and young pitching is even more precious than veteran pitching as far as the possibility of making deals at the deadline. The Braves are in very good shape with regards to that as well. They have a lot of poker chips with which to play if they need to add something at the deadline in July. Now that's obviously predicated on them being in this race. That's obviously predicated on not having a massive amount of injuries which befell the starting staff last year. And let's not forget too they're going to get Glavin back as I said but also Tim Hudson at some point late in the summer in either August or September. Remember when we saw Florida in April they looked like they were going to run away with it looked like world beaters yep. because of their starting pitching. All of a sudden that suspect they got a few aches and pains they got Anibal Sanchez on the disabled list. Unfortunately, Atkins hits it a mile high to left. No play for Garrett. And that just follows up what you just talked about and what happened to the Braves starting rotation last year. It's again, pitching is so precious, everybody tries to protect it, and this the least little glitch can really affect your season. And it's amazing what's happened to Florida. Record wise since that great start and yeah, a stretch of 20 21 games something like that without a win from one of their starters. That's almost impossible to do. There's another team that had a stretch of 26 games without a win from a starter this year. As Atkins now a 2 2 count. And now a full count coming with the bases clear in this seventh inning. But general managers, managers will tell you, you start to evaluate your club right around 40 games or so. This is the 38th game for Atlanta, and Jurgens is a pitching machine. A season high, eight strikeouts as he takes care of Atkins in the seventh. It's time to stretch.
look at the Braves' upcoming schedule brought to you by AirTran Airways. Go. There's nothing stopping you. Two more games against the Rockies in this series. They'll both be on Sports South. First pitch at 7-10 on Wednesday and Thursday. Then the Blue Jays come to town. We were talking about that. We'll be back with you on Peachtree TV for those first two games of the series. Then Fox Sports South will have the game on Sunday. That's a 135 first pitch. Then the Braves wrap up the month of May with a long seven game road trip that will take them to San Francisco on that pitching staff. Then to Chase Field in Arizona. Braves back home June 2nd, 3rd and 4th when the battling Cubbies come to town for their first visit to Turner Field. Joel Peralta in for the Iraqis. Casey Kochman is going to lead things off two for three with an RBI and a run tonight. So it's his 11th multi hit game of the year. Let's see if the Braves can add on against this porous Rockies bullpen. An ERA of almost six for Mr. Peralta last year with Kansas City. They got him as a free agent in the spring training. Let's check out our Georgia Lottery scorecard brought to you by the Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. Dribbler hit toward Tulowitzki. Boy, he is the maximum effort guy with that throw, isn't he? Sure is. Talking about the Rockies bullpen, an 07, very good collective ERA of 385. But things have gone the wrong way, and it's up to 5.20 at present time. As we like to ask in the play-by-player -play chair, is that good or bad? That is, that would be a B. That would be a B. That's right. Bad. Chipper Jones bats. He's walked with the bases loaded. That drove in his 15th run. He struck out and grounded out in his other two official plate appearances. Colorado has just seven saves this year, by the way. They have four blown saves on the year. See pitchers on their roster now. Seven point ERA, seven point ERA. Peralta, new to the club. There's a shot in the right center field. Let's see how Fowler does. Cuts it off, spins quickly, and throws a strike to second. This is such a great swing. And he is swinging the bat so well right now, but so relaxed. His hands are freed up to do a lot. And watch the catcher. Ionet is going down like on a breaking ball to catch that ball backhanded. And Chipper stayed with it and just dropped the barrel of the bat down and in and squared it up. So he's one hit away from a thousand here at Turner Field. He's got a six game hitting streak that he'll carry into tomorrow's third game of the series. And Brian McCann, one for three with an RBI, is the hitter. Is he going to back clean up the rest of the year, staying healthy? I hope so. Lefty, righty, wouldn't matter to me. I'd love to see him hitting behind Chipper. Full there by Peralta, 0 and 2. Good off speed pitch. Rafael Soriano is up in the Braves bullpen. Looks like he'll work in the eighth. He's been nursing a bit of a sore groin muscle. Looks like he's ready to go tonight. Nothing and two to Bryant. Good stop by Ionetta. Check it out. Look at Eddie Perez got a little like, writing desk with a stake that. How convenient is that? You'd think he'd just be able to squat right on the chair, yeah. right? Right. It's nice. Professor Perez. Uh huh. Older you get, the closer to your eyes you like that right. 
Swing and a miss. What is so I know what you I know you're not trying to say it. You're just flat out saying he's old. I'm just pretty much saying he's old and needs that to be where he can read it. Rather than bend over. Oh, and see Soriano's got the water glass right there. He reach now's over and get it. Doesn't have to bend over for it. Is Buddy Carlisle ratting us out? I think he might have. A strike to Anderson. Now let's see. If Buddy goes back in that. Yeah, yeah, he's going back in the room. Boy, we might be in trouble with Eddie. Oh, and one the count to Anderson. And now it's one and one. It's like a screwball he's throwing. Had McCann fishing for it, and had Anderson chasing it there. Even Kochman's ground out to shortstop looked like he was kind of lunging for something going down and away. Colorado, the fourth organization for Joel Peralta out of Boneo of the Dominican Republic. He's listed at 33 years of age. First taste of the big leagues came in 2005 when he pitched out of the Angels pen in 28 games. Did a good job for him. So he knows Garrett Anderson and knows Kochman. And went to Kansas City where in 06 and 07 went 2 and 6. He had 126 relief games. And just missed for a full count. So Chipper will be running, you'd think, with two outs, helping will play behind him. Center field. That'll drop for a hit. Chipper on his way to third. He'll make it without a throw. Two more hits for Garrett Anderson, and they're at the corners with two out. He's coming to life. He's hitting seven straight. His average steadily climbing. Stays on that high fastball and takes it the other way. Good signs from Garrett Anderson, too. He saw him going first to third on a base hit to left field tonight, too. Talking about his legs feeling better. Talk about feeling better. Kelly Johnson tonight has put 21 points on his batting average with a three for three game. Ionetta moves well back there, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He's a good player. Kelly now with three three hit games for the Braves club. And he has four career four hit games in the big leagues. Another nice block by Ionetta. Saved a run. Big breakout tonight, hit wise, too. First game of the Diamondback series, the Braves had seven hits. Got shut out the next night on seven hits. And last night got beat on only five hits. They have 12 tonight. So does Bobby pencil in this same starting eight tomorrow? I would think so. Balls and a strike. Rockies do have the luxury of a base open. They've got Fran Coor next. Jeff has continued to struggle in this series. And 
Johnson a 3 1 count. They best be careful. And he popped it up. In comes Fowler in center field. He calls everybody off. And the side is retired. To the eighth inning we go. Braves in command. Kelly shaking his head. Beach Street TV beats and bases right here at Turner Field on top of the Chop House. You gotta be there. Live entertainment, great music, and you know what? You might even get a chance to win some great Peach Street TV prizes. You gotta be there. Tell your friends about it. It is the first ever Peach Street TV beats and bases at the Chop House. Make sure you do it. Make sure you be there. Is JJ the guy that does that uh, drag racing commercial too? You know that Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Grand Island, Nebraska Raceway. I don't know. Be there. I think JJ might want to switch to decaf by Friday. He's fired up tonight. He was firing at fastball, too. Did you see him? Yeah. Airing it out. I bet he'd strike out the lemmer. <laughs> <laughs> Soriano starts things off with Dexter Fowler. Lemmer's going to be mad at me tomorrow on the pregame show. Ah, uh, you'll get over it. Yeah. <laughs> Now we've broken down a lot of swings, broken down a lot of pitching motions. I want you to break down JJ's mechanics on this. Good balance. Had a little trouble getting on top. Not much on the follow through. You know, if he got his backside into it, we're talking 90 plus. So you know what? He doesn't follow through. He's got to. He's going to have to get these hips working down here, and follow through, and then you start bringing that bad boy up up there at about 90. Kind of hard to pitch when you got a mic in your hand. It had to hinder the the, the, the hip turn. I think maybe we can get Roger McDowell to work with him on Friday before I'm sure. the game. I'm sure. I'm sure we could get him in the cage. Mm -hmm. Count to Fowler. Don't want to put him on. Soriano hasn't worked in this homestand. His last action was the 13th at New York. And again, nursing a bit of a strained groin muscle. Oh, nice play. Very nice play. It looks like he's going to give it away. What a great gesture there. Nicely done, sir. Nice catch. Can't use the hands, surround the ball. And Fowler 
walks to lead off the eighth inning. Every now and then you'll see a fan give a youngster a pop foul. And the kid will just take the ball and fire it back yeah. on the field thinking that's where it belongs. And you see the whole crowd. No. Yeah, I'm just showing it to you. You can't hold yeah, it. Don't even, can't touch, don't even look at it. Right. right. Double play ball off the bat of Tulowitzki. Kelly hangs in there. Quick turn. Good play. Two out. I dare you to show me a better second baseman on the turn than Kelly Johnson. Awfully quick, and he's got to know who his runner is. He knows it's a fast runner, so he stayed behind the base to use it as a little bit of protection here. And got rid of it quickly. T. Lewinsky gets down the line quickly, too. Nice turn. And I believe I just heard 16,749, the attendance. That is, however, as we know, sometimes subject to a recount. It was a five, five point discrepancy last yes. night on the adjustment. Yes. Because they didn't account for us in the booth. Right. Now we only have four people in here tonight, so an even narrower margin for error on the turnstile count tonight. Everybody at the chop house getting ready for the Metro mix tomorrow night. Oh, is that tomorrow night? Oh, it's Thursday night. Thursday night. Uh huh. It looks like they're getting tuned up out there. I thought I mismarked my calendar. One ball, two strikes. A little bit short on that one. This is the kind of game, though, where a relief pitcher can work on some stuff if he wants to throw a change up. If he makes a mistake, he's still got a gigantic lead. Especially two out, nobody on. Yeah. First final in, the Red Sox won tonight. Beat Toronto 2-1 to one behind Tim Wakefield. He's having a great year. That one bent around the plate. Helton took it, full count. Fans umpiring behind home plate thought it was a strike. Fly ball to right. And Soriano back pitched effectively in the eighth inning. 6 1. Braves in command late. You have to stay at home. The Braves have some great ticket deals. Check out the Chevron Family Value Plan and get four tickets, four hot dogs, four cokes, parking, a program, and a $5 gift card for only 59 bucks. 
order, visit Braves.com slash tickets. $59 for all of that, and they even help pay your gas on the way down here. Great deal. So we invite you to take advantage of that. Jeff Francoeur starts the eighth for the Braves. 0 for 3 is he. And quickly down a strike. Braves also made some news today. Talk so much about what happens between the white lines. But the Braves was always very active in the community. They received an A-plus award in recognition of their longstanding partnership with D.H. Stanton Elementary. And they have the Braves Tom Octors program. Braves front office employees spent each week time at D.H. Stanton Elementary mentoring, mentoring and tutoring fifth grade kids. And so great partnership between the Atlanta Public Schools and the Atlanta Braves and Megan Swindle. Or Swindle, I beg your pardon, was beaming when she handed us that press release earlier tonight. So <laughs> Frank Coor will make his way to first after being plunked by Peralta. That'll leave a mark. Oh, he was lucky. Really lucky, Chip. That ball looked like he was headed for the ear flap on his helmet, at the very least his neck, and somehow I think it got him on the back of the shoulder. He kind of raised his shoulder up there to try to duck behind it, and that's about all he could do to keep this from hitting him in the head. Very, very lucky. He doesn't want to rub it, but you can tell it hurts. You know it does. And here's Schaefer, Jordan. Again, an encouraging sign, making a little more consistent contact for the Braves. Put the ball in play three times tonight. And he's got a couple of RBIs and a run. Foul. Well, Glenn Hubbard's had to skip the rope a couple of times. He's yeah, hit it straight, boys. Have you noticed Jordan Schaefer's hands working a little better? A little quicker. Get the barrel of the bat through there. Swing is shorter. When it was longer, he was getting tied up inside, which resulted in a lot of strikeouts. Little dribbler. I don't know. Is the, is the jump from double A to the big leagues as big a leap as we make it out to be? Yeah, in this respect. Double A, you're probably going to see, oh, at least one real good pitching prospect in any one series, maybe two. Okay. Probably two, maybe a good reliever. Triple A, you're going to see at least two good pitching prospects on any given team and a couple of good relievers. But every day here, buddy. Every single day, you got somebody that can pitch and knows what they're doing. So even the 10th or 11th guy on a major yeah. league staff is probably the best guy you're going to see at Double A. I would think so. Yeah, it's it's just a never-ending battle every single day. And there's a strikeout of Schaefer. And I would imagine it's like riding a bike. You could describe it all you want, but until someone does it. And falls and stumbles a couple of times. You don't really figure out how to do it properly. Well, and you got to do some homework. You know, I mean, Jordan doesn't know any of these guys. So he's got to spend extra time perhaps in the video room watching what these guys throw, how they pitch left-handed hitters, what their out pitch is. He's got to go to Terry Pendleton and, and ask him about scouting reports. Greg Norton bats chance for Bobby to try to keep him tuned up as a pinch hitter and and that doesn't help you when you're in the batter's box other than give you some tendencies if there's base if there's guys on base or if he's ahead of you in the count what's he what's he likely to throw when he's ahead in the count so it's it's a very difficult learning curve when you're at that kind of disadvantage. And again, we're only six weeks into the season. Way too early to make any kind of judgments, good or bad, about a rookie or even a star player who's well into his major league career. There's a shot off Norton's bad foul. And we can't minimize 
uh, his wrist injury and what it has how it has affected his swing the first six weeks of the season too. talking about Schaefer he it's definitely had an effect on it but it's getting better and his bats getting a little quicker as a result. Two balls and a strike six one Atlanta Braves need three outs defensively to even up this series. And a mile high pop fly into shallow left Seth Smith comes on. He's got that Phillies are winning in Cincinnati that's in the eighth inning. That's a four three game. Told you the Mets play the Dodgers later. The Mets and Phillies, the two teams ahead of the Braves in this Eastern Division race. But Atlanta winning tonight a chance to cut the gap to two games behind both those clubs who are tied atop the division pile. One ball, no strikes. Tigers beat Texas tonight. That ends Texas's seven game winning streak. Well, the Rangers have been one of the surprise teams. I don't think many people figured them to be leading the West. The big question mark was their pitching staff, which has been a hugely pleasant surprise. Not the Milwaukee Brewers. Yeah. They've won 20 of 25 games. Not too bad. And they've had some injuries too. Ryan Braun's missed some games. Lost weeks yesterday. That's a big blow. But Trevor Hoffman has been a huge difference maker at the back of the bullpen. He's been perfect in saves. And Gallardo and Dave Bush and Jeff Supon has been resurgent for him. Yeah, they've got to have Bush and Supon continue to pitch well. Yeah, everybody said, well, the Cubs are just going to win 100 games and just sashay through the Central. I had them sashaying. There are four teams in that race, including the Reds. As you mentioned, they've got at times overwhelming pitching in a very young club. But how about the Joey Votto story? That's a little odd. He's had to miss a whole bunch of time the last couple of weeks. He keeps having a dizziness problem. And uh, Hal McCoy in the Dayton newspaper today said it reminds him of Nick Asaski. Braves oh fans my. remember Nick Asaski and the vertigo issues that were a problem. But they think stem from Lyme disease. They don't think it's Lyme disease with regards to Votto, but he was supposed to see a specialist in Cincinnati today. And he's a big, big part of their team, and obviously everybody hopes that budding young star can get healthy again. I've said this before, but for those Braves fans that remember Nick Asaski and say, oh, yeah, well, what a waste that was to sign him. The year before he signed in Boston, he was as good a hitter as there was in the American League. Tough out. What a shame that he wasn't able to come here and and show that at the old ballpark the launching pad oh. think about what he could have done. He was he was a very good hitter just the year before. So the Reds in the hunt with the Cubs the Cardinals and Brewers Cubs and Cardinals playing tonight in St. Louis by the way. That story rivalry continues, and Escobar gets hit on the hand. That's the second hit batsman of the inning. A glancing blow, but on a cold night, that's not going to feel good. And Clint Hurdle out to see if Ionetta's okay. He might have caught the ricochet. He did. And catchers, because of the different angle in which the ball comes at them after a hitter's been struck, yeah, got him on the bare hand. Got both of them on the bare hand. He now got it on the back of his left hand. Ionetta on the back of his right hand. I mean, flush on Ionetta. They can't afford to lose him. Likewise, the Braves shortstop. Looks like Yunel's okay. Nick Sasky that year before he signed with the Braves. 
Hal looked it up for me. 30 homers and 108 RBIs. And that was a legit 30. You bet. So two are on, two out, two hit batsmen by Peralta in this inning. And Casey Kochman, the batter, two for four in the game. 11th multi hit game of the season for Kochman, who has accosted himself well in that number two spot in the order. Low from Peralta, one ball and no strikes. Casey's just good at handling the bat. I think he can do different things with the baseball. If Escobar is on base, for example, moving him over, pulling the ball in the hole, he's capable of doing that. He's also capable of driving it into right center field. That might clear him. Fran Cruz going to score. Here comes Escobar around third. He's getting the green light. Throw cut off. Big night for Casey Kochman. Three more RBIs for him. And the Braves make Peralta pay for those plunkings. Hitting can be contagious. And again, when you score some early runs and everybody loosens up, you get a little more aggressive. Coxman got a real good pitch to hit there. Fastball up and out over the plate. And he made Peralta pay. So 15 doubles for Kochman. Two of them tonight. Let's see who leads the league in that category. He did. That ties him with uh, Freddie Sanchez of the Pirates, who has 15. Zimmerman, Ramirez, and Orlando Hudson of the Dodgers with 14 at the start of play tonight. Chipper with an RBI tonight with that bases loaded walk in the second inning gives him 1,389 RBIs. 1389. He's now second on the all time. Braves career list. Wow. Behind Hank Aaron. I don't think he would have thought it would come on a bases loaded walk, do you? No. But however you get there. Passing Eddie Matthews. He's passed Eddie Matthews on a couple of different lists, extra base hit lists. And career Atlanta hits, I believe. No. Another one the other night. And I can't remember. So to pass another, a fellow third baseman, Hall of Famer, in all those categories, pretty impressive. Ground ball to second ends the Atlanta eighth, but a prosperous one for the Bravos. They pick up two more runs and do that with only one hit.
seven. Soriano made his way through an easy eighth. Now Mike Gonzalez a chance to stay sharp. An on save situation for him as he's on for the 20th time. Yeah, maybe more of a get back to being sharp. He had a blown save his last outing, but he did pick up a win against Arizona after he gave up that home run to Stephen Drew. But it's been four days since he's pitched. Had some rest. Should feel good tonight. <laughs> and fires a quick strike at the knees. Was joking with Mike at the start of this uh, series with Colorado. I said, How's it going, pal? He said, Couple of days rest, never hurt anybody. Remember, he was working so hard in that uh, long road trip for the Braves. And just said in that final game in New York, I gave up the leadoff double. There's no way that run was going to score. I'll do whatever I can. The guys worked too hard for me to let this one get away. Uh, he was unhittable in that last game, that Wednesday game. That uh, elbow that was repaired with the Tommy John surgery. Has given him no trouble at all with the fastball. It's the slider, he says, that's still anywhere from 40 to 60 percent on time, which many pitchers who've had that surgery say is the normal course, even a year and a half, two years away from surgery. But you're right, partner. The times he snaps it off and it's good, it is unhittable. And that usually comes with a little rest. Braves will have to make a move on their roster come Thursday when Chris Medlin makes his start. Oh, just missed the corner. Mike thought it was there. Hootie who or hootie where was that? Got to get 27 outs, you know, Chip. So, got to make a couple more pitches here to get right. number 25. Well, Hop's not going quietly tonight, is he? Hop a long bat. Hop a long at bat here. Does he skip and jump too? Mm -hmm. Nine pitch at bat already. This is bad costing a fortune in baseballs. <laughs> Tough economy, Brad. Let's go. Whoa, get a run. Well, got a foul ball, you get a kiss. Brad Hop's been pretty tough with two strikes this year. He's a guy who always been known as a free swinger, but he's among the National League leaders in two strike hits with 21. Ryan Zimmerman has 22 to lead the league. Now that pitch, not a strike. Does the gentleman get a kiss? No. I'm no, just on the just on the fouls. There's another foul. Well no, but he got a souvenir. Oh, that's not what I was asking. And I know, oh. but it's gotta be a souvenir. Oh, okay. See I misunderstood. I just thought it was sort of a strange ninth inning ritual that was going on there. No dizzy. Okay. You know, I've got it figured out. <laughs> Come on, Glenn, play along. It's ninth inning. <laughs> Three, two. 
Popped up. Chipper is there. Yippee! Good at bat, though, by Hawk. 13 pitches. And he's out number one. Only one base runner for the Rockies since the fifth inning, and that was the walk, the leadoff walk to Fowler in the eighth by Soriano, but he got a quick double play to get rid of him. Here's Chris Iannetta. Clint Hurdle was drawing some heat because of the start the Rockies got off to. And they're already ten and a half games back of the Dodgers. But this is a team that doesn't typically do a lot of knee jerk changes. They they're pretty. They're pretty patient. That's something Clint said uh, a couple of years ago during that red hot run. I know you saw the Rockies late mm -hmm. and saw their play in game. But he said it takes courage to have patience. It has it takes courage to wait for your players to develop. It takes courage to not have knee jerk reactions with your pitching coaches. Your manager. As that ball popped up near the screen and just out of reach of Brian McCann. But your point is worth mentioning and we talked about it briefly last night. Under Clint Hurdle they've been to the playoffs one time. They've never won the division their highest finish the second. In what has been something, a division that's been ripe for the picking out west. Yeah. yeah. No, and I think that was part of what was written in this story about the suggestion that he might be under the gun because of what you just described. Well, and the man that he beat, Bob Melvin, has already been the first manager fired this year. Down on strikes, Ionetta. Two outs for Gonzalez in the ninth. There's one of those wicked breaking balls. Yeah, I wanted to see that again because it was well located too. Down and in. Threw it down under the hands of Ionetta. Good change of speed too. Tougher to catch up to. Pulled off that pitch a little bit because of the change of speed. Now in fairness to Clint Hurdle. Some of his players are underachieving offensively. His closer now pitches in Anaheim. His big power right hand hitting bat was traded to Oakland in a cost move because they didn't think they could resign Matt Holiday. Todd Hilton had back problems most of last year. And it isn't his fault that they play at 5,280 feet either. Well, that's all. Part of the package when you're managing the Rockies. That, yeah, you, you, you know that going in. And Jeff Francis is hurt too. I mean, that doesn't oh make boy. it That's huge. any easier. So how do you, you know, how do you judge their club when they don't have their club together? I don't know the answer to that. Three balls, no strikes to Ryan Spillboards. And four straight puts him on here in the ninth inning. Rockies are paying pretty close attention to the first three pitches of that at bat. Yeah. As Gonzalez buzzed Spielborg's inside, Braves have had a couple of men hit in this series. Yeah, and, and it was a point well made. He, I'm not sure he needed to do it twice, but it looked like he was trying to even the score a little bit, and it cost him a walk. So now let's get back on track. Reminder from the pitching coach to let's finish this game up and Put it in the wind column. Ian Stewart, the final Colorado hope. Braves have struck out nine Colorado hitters in the game. They have walked five tonight. The highlight offensively for the Rockies. Todd Hilton picked up his 2,000th big league hit. No asterisk to it. It was a beautiful hit and run in the third inning. But Atlanta has simply overpowered them at the plate tonight. 13 Braves hits. And a high strike. Spielborgs takes second. Braves don't worry about that. That's defensive indifference. No steal. And now 1 1 count.
Braves will face a lefty tomorrow. Jorge De La Rosa, so I'm not sure this lineup will remain as it is tonight. One that's been successful, but the Braves against left-handed starters 10 and 4 on the year. Like those odds. Yeah. That ball two strikes. <laughs> ball game over. Braves hammer the Rockies 8 to 1. They even the series at a game apiece. The new lineup, at least for one night, looked very, very good. Every Braves starter. With the exception of Jeff Francoeur had at least one hit tonight, but Jeff did reach base twice and scored a run. 